just a very brief introduction. My name is Nilesh. Uh, I've been in the SaaS space uh, and the customer success space uh, for the last nine years, uh, nine, nine and a half years now. Dalit, uh, who uh, I spoke about the long. Uh, for me, it was a, uh, a coincidence of uh, joining the SaaS company. Uh, I, I never knew what is uh, software business, what is a SaaS business. I feel like uh, Dalit, uh, coming from a very typical Marwari uh, distribution business kind of a background. Uh, so, uh, knowing software, knowing, uh, working in a software business, uh, then doing what is SaaS, then doing this for success uh, was uh, a very clear thing. Uh, where on have I worked with? I worked with Bizon, started out with the entire business success journey from there. Uh, the entire zero to one uh, scale. Uh, post that, I was with the uh, get the entire business success team. Uh, was part of that journey uh, when, they, when they became a unicorn. Uh, this entire Google phase uh, started out with just about 5 6 million. Like an AR for 20 million plus uh, AR in just about 2 years. Uh, again, a uh, very, very India uh, focused kind of a business to start with and eventually expanded to many other uh, job right? uh, I've also worked uh, with, a, uh, with another company based startup called Google, which was in the short tech uh, space. Nice. So I've seen this journey now, I'm currently working uh, as an advisor in a few SaaS companies uh, like uh, iBooka, uh, Extra Edge, and like uh, Extra Edge. I can see I uh, uh, skill assessment uh, kind of space and working uh, as well uh, leading the, the global customer success team now and uh, as well in the value based uh, logistics uh, space as well. Right? Uh, now, I am more from an operator uh, kind of thing. Right? Uh, but because I have been in the operator kind of I know the other side of the story. Uh, and the last nine years or so, I've always been working very closely with the founders, mostly as a right? uh, So I know uh, the mindset, the growth mindset, the kind of challenges that they have, uh, the kind of things that they are going through, and the kind of mistakes that happen uh, in that particular journey. Right? What I'm going to focus on now is what are the mistakes that me happen, which a lot of other problems are already doing, and that those things that you should not do, right? And, and the reason I am saying that is that it look very obvious, but some of the things that we will discuss now is, by the time we realize that we need customer success, we are already in a ditch. It's more of a reactive uh, kind of an approach, uh, and then you are trying to predict, and like you mentioned, uh, it is a slow process. It is not like a quick win. It's more like a test match. It takes time to get the results. It's not your sales and marketing. Uh, with most founders, just not focus on sales and marketing uh, and those kind of things. And customer success is, is generally a reactive kind of thing. And the results are expected immediately. And because the results are expected immediately, a lot of knee jerk reactions happen. And that further takes you in the ditch. Right? So, while most of you are in this 0 to 1 million uh, year journey, that you, some of the things that you should keep in mind and start practicing right from today, like when has come, right? That's the only thing that you need to do. As I also mentioned, that you know, don't read a lot uh, on the internet or LinkedIn. That's all generic yeah. 90% of the time, yeah, is, is just not executed. Okay. So don't confuse yourself with a lot of these big technologies which does not make any sense. Right? Uh, focus on the goal, focus on your customers. Uh, most of the things will take it to its purpose. Because most of us are in this new world journey. We first need to understand why customer success is important. I'm assuming that most of you know what is customer success, so I'm not spending a lot of time on that. Uh, right? Customer success. In simple terms, you are you're talking about three main uh, objectives, uh, and if you are able to understand those objectives, most of the things will any which way fall in place. Uh, number one is increasing the retention rate, which we all know, right? We are all in the B2B SaaS space, 
whatever kind of customers uh, we are working with, whether they are SMEs or uh, with markets or enterprise and uh, all of those customers. Uh, but the core agenda is increasing retention, right? The second aspect is about the NRR. Right? For someone who don't know what is an NRR, the NRR is basically the net retention rate, right? And when I say net retention rate, uh, uh, and all, all of these numbers that I'm talking about, by the way, are for existing customers. I'm not touching the hunting aspect at all. Right? So NRR is basically uh, your total ARR that you started off with at the start of the year, plus any expansions that may have happened on those existing customers, which is your upsells, cross sales, organic expansions, and those kinds of things, minus any churns and the contractions that may have happened. Someone asked the question about down. Uh, the downtrends which are happening in that industry. And the final number that you get, that's what is an NRR. So, for example, you start with 100k as your ARR, you get, uh, let's say, 40, uh, 40k as your uh, as your uh, expansion, and let's say 10k is your churn, and 10k is your contraction, because in some accounts, contraction is bound to happen. Right? So, it's 100 plus 40 minus 10 minus 10, that's about 120k. So, your NRR is 120 percent. Yeah. So that's how the NRR is expected to catch. Uh, in customer success, uh, this becomes a very important aspect. And why? We we'll just uh, see that in a simple graph. Right. And the third part, which most of us don't even think about, and let me give a very beautiful example, is your customer advocacy part. Right. What do you mean by customer advocacy? Uh, that's your reference. Uh, that's your uh, testimonials, your reviews. G2, Platter, whatever you use, uh, you know, we want to use it in our, uh, in our, uh, in our sales mix, in our uh, marketing activities, uh, that these are existing happy customers and all of that. Uh, in Bizon, for example, we used to do reference calls to their existing customers. Right? Uh, if customer success is not in place, you will not have the great relationships with your existing customers. And if you don't have those existing relationships, if your potential customer wants to take a reference with one of your existing customers, that how has this product been? you will never get that positive difference. The sales cycle suddenly comes down, right? So indirectly, directly, somehow you are able to uh, get more business from your, uh, from your business. Sometimes we are the marketing tools in this testimonials and reviews and all of that, right? So three core aspects that we are talking about. And this has to start from day zero, right? Uh, probably in the first phase, we can just start with, like, uh, in, in game side, this is called a unicorn CSE, right? A very simple chart which gives you an understanding you know, your new customer booking versus your existing customer booking. While most of you would be in this year one, year two, or probably year three kind of a category, but it's a simple understanding of you know what happens if you're not focusing on your customer success. So while in year one, like most of your business, which is the lower percent of your business, may be coming from your sales and marketing related activities. This is the hunting part. And a very small proportion of the business is coming from your existing customers. But as you go to the next stage, the new business contribution will, will go down. Right? And the existing uh, and the business contribution from your existing customers will go up. Right? I was in Pune with, uh, with uh, one of the SaaS companies uh, you know, in the 5 million to 10 million era. Uh, and the founder said very specifically that you know, even if I fire my entire sales and marketing team today, my business will not shut down. Because I have my customer success team who will renew the accounts every year and possibly get some growth also on that. It is an error of business success. But if I fire my customer success team today, I am sure that within a year my business is going to shut down. Because I am completely dependent on a very expensive uh, customer acquisition cost. Right? And my entire business is dependent. Right, so keep that in mind, but you, know, you, you don't have to realize that after you have crossed 5 million, right? Once you cross your first 50 customers, your first 100 customers, cross your 1 million PR kind of thing, then you get into the complexities of uh, segment missions and all of that. But in the first initial phase, just keep it generated. But keep an eye on your on your data. Get this started and running right. Uh, while we know where the business is coming from now, we also have to understand that if we don't do this, what's going to happen? Right? We all know 
okay. because of customer success, there is a potential goal we talked about NRR. We also spoke about the first meeting was the retention rate. Right? But if not that well, and we also know that it takes long time to build up customer success. But small difference, what is that small difference can, can create in your revenue over a period of three years? You know, that will just that will just blow you over. Right? And why is this important, right? As, as founders, uh, and then sort of can back that as founders, you have traditionally there are just three things that we all were focusing on, right? One is of course your revenue and the those aspect two is your returns, what is the uh, you know, the token incoming and the token outgoing part. Uh, third is your valuation because you have to raise your funding and all of that. These are the only three core aspects. Right? The last few years, one important additional element has also come into place. Right? And sort of get back that up, uh, which is called as uh, retention rates. A big, big contribution in your overall company valuation. And I've been in that journey quite a bit. And while working with a lot of other, uh, other startups. Uh, and, and like I said, you cannot fix that in one day. You need to need to raise your next round of funding, but you will now have to wait for one year, two years just to get the right valuation. So all of these are directly and directly dependent. Right? So let me just share a very simple scenario. You know, if if you're not paying attention to customer success right now, as a process, as a table, what is the kind of impact that this may bring to your business? A very simple example, right? Uh, starting off at the current stage that we are at mostly in this initial quadrant. Uh, it's a simple example, you know, let's say one or uh, two uh, SaaS companies, both having the same growth rate, uh, uh, both having the same uh, customer acquisition rate. There's only one difference. One company has a higher churn rate, the other company has a lower churn. And the difference is very, very small. But what that difference is doing over a period of three years. We are just talking about a period of three years, right? So potentially $21 million revenue can actually become just a $15 million revenue. Right? Now join those dots about those three or four important parameters that as a founder you have to keep in mind to raise your next round of funding, the valuation of your profitability and all those things. This is a big difference. Right? How big is this difference? 38.5% difference in just three years period. Your valuation by the way are 20,000. This is just four numbers, right? And 38.5% difference just by how big difference in the journey. You will surprise you see this. Just 1% difference in churn rate of company A and company B. Both going at the same rate as a difference of almost 40% in their career in just about 3 years. Whatever number is I have an Excel sheet that I can share with you. Just put in your numbers there and you know how big that difference is. Right? This numbers may vary a little bit. My focus is on the 20 and 20 This 21 and 15 can change, but that would still not change. This is important and this is a slow process. And it has to be started with whatever the scale you want. Right? The process may differ, the unicorn CSM may work as a journalist, but that is not scalable. That was that is currently happening in a lot of uh, SaaS companies, even at a scale of a million, two million, three million. Right? Now if they want to start, like you said, the usual example, it will take multi years just to get back into this. And by the way, 15% uh, churn rate itself is a very high churn rate. Moving on. So, what are the top three pitfalls which typically founders are in okay. uh, So, good question. So, this uh, churn rate according to the industry standards should be below 5%. Uh, it, it depends on what, uh, what are the kind of customers that you are serving. If, if you have actually long tail uh, customers, you know, very, very small SME. Uh, customers and majority uh, of your logos are from there, but a very small contribution of their income is coming from there. It is expected that the churn rate is going to be a little higher on that. Right? With, with SMEs, uh, there are some things which are controllable, some things which are not, and you can only uh, extend yourself to a particular point. 
right? So, for example, in Leechquid, uh, we had uh, 1500 plus customers, right? If you want to build a customer success team uh, which serves equally to the vitals of the world as well as to the long game, it is, it is again not clear, right? And we will discuss this a little later. Uh, but the point that I am trying to highlight here is that uh, the churn rate will differ depending on your customers. So, even at uh, the, uh, the SMB, the long tail of the customers, they had a higher churn rate compared to But for enterprises and for key accounts, our churn rates were in very, very close to rates. Right? Like for mid markets, they were higher. So when I say mid market, you know, they are neither SMBs nor enterprise, but potential uh, to, become a, to become an enterprise. So, yes, this will vary. In general terms, if they are long tail SMB customers, it is expected to be in early double digits. If they are big markets, it is expected to be somewhere in the 5 to 10 percent uh, category. If they are enterprise and CAM, uh, they should be in like very, very early single digit. Like, you know, CAM should be at 0 percent uh, because even if one customer goes and that one customer is contributing 10 15 percent of the total business, everything else goes for a loss. So, your enterprise uh, logo churn rate should typically be in the 2 percent, 3 percent uh, end of the year. Under 5%, that was the Under 5%, yeah. absolutely. Right, so why I am talking about the pitfalls? Because whatever mistakes that we are doing to, to here, now in this team, where, where most of you are in this you know, uh, category, uh, that is what is going to decide where are you going to go from here. Right? If, if these pitfalls, if you are not learning from these pitfalls, it is bound to happen that after a year, yes. The conversation is not at how to get my customer success. The conversation would be now at how do I correct the mistakes that I have already done. That is a bad stage to be, right? And I'll give you my own personal example that in the last uh, eight nine months that I have spoken with, uh, you know, 35, 40 plus uh, founders, and then, you know, like I said, most of them are reactive customer success team uh, developments. They realize the importance of customer success team once once they have lost a few large enterprise or a few key and then, that's when they realize, oh God, what do I do now? Right. So let's let's not be in that state. And what are those very three top priority mistakes that you have to and have to avoid now, so that you don't have to uh, you know make those corrections uh, after a year from now? What are those pitfalls? A scalable CS strategy. A strategy may be a big word. I, I generally don't like that, but you know just to give a context, what do I mean when I say scalable CS strategy? You may not have a very, you know, hundreds of customers today, right? You may not have a dedicated customer success team today, right? But what does CS strategy mean is you need to know that what is a customer success team supposed to do when you are going to have large number of customers, right? What do I mean by that? Right? Uh, you have uh, customers now, and I'll like, give like an example that most of the time in his earlier businesses he was in the cocoon, not talking with customers. But as soon as the customer conversation started, we realized that focusing on the business outcomes that the customer want is And out of those, what are the business points, uh, business outcomes that the customer expects? What do they expect immediately during the onboarding phase? Right? Customers want some results to be coming in right now, immediately after the onboarding is done. Right? Which is typically called as time to first run, TTF. Right? So your CS strategy includes that as soon as the customer comes in, how am I going to onboard? Right? And on LinkedIn or in general, you guys may have been practicing every new employee that comes in. We all do so many goodies and onboarding and LinkedIn posts and this and that and all that kind of things. Right? Do we do that same thing for our new customers? Right? How is that journey to begin? Sales, marketing, big dreams and all of that. As soon as the customer is in, the onboarding experience is like this. Right? And your customer success starts from sorry, 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 sorry. Right? And the next six months are just to neutralize these negative uh, these negative experiences. Right? You don't have enough time now to build relationships. You have started on a negative note and getting further businesses and all of that becomes very you have lost six months of it. Right? And why are we doing all of this with our employees? Because we want them to be you know, feeling like a family, feeling like 
who they give in their 100% and all of that, but that is missing from the customer agreement. So when I say see your agreement, that is what I mean by see right? Knowing your business out. Similarly, once the onboarding is done, assuming that great onboarding time, what next? Like the regular example, the rituals. The rituals from here on plays a very, very important thing. After I got my customer, after I screwed my time to first value. Right? The first immediate as soon as you show them the big dashboard and see the number that started coming. Right? So in Bizarre, the FNCG uh, example, uh, typically FNCG uh, distribution is a regional based distribution or pan India based distribution depending on the type of products. And they have that presence in multi cities. The way we used to start that is we start with one city. The first city we go there, do our onboarding, and as soon as the onboarding is done, the dashboards and numbers are ready. And we show them that. And they realize you create. If it works here, it will surely work in all of That's your type of first step. Right? And for different businesses, this will differ. Right? So you have to understand and identify that what is the type of first step. And it has to be a conservative approach. It's not that you think that this is the type of first step, but you assume that this is the business of right? It has to be valid in the type of first step. So that is your senior strategy part. One, how about onboarding? How do you give them that, that you know, premium experience? Right? And, and who did it this? Like I gave an example of employees, uh, employees, you know, who did it this uh, as an as a human? Right? When we are selling to the towers and the writers of the world, uh, it, it's not that I'm selling to tower, I'm selling to people. Right? End of the day, they are people. I can't see tower, but I can see the people who are uh, what's it, right? Uh, and and those people have that people kind of thing because they have taken the decision that yes, you want to go ahead with your product. Right? They are betting on you. That I have to show it to my management that I have taken the right decision. Right? And if you fuck up there, you are basically putting me in the geopardy. That, okay, next time, never ever I am going to enter the next part. Right? Because that impacted my career. Right? So you have to keep that one particular thing in mind that again comes from the CS uh, strategy. And why is this time to first value hence important is that, that initial thing, right? Let's say you buy a new car, right? A big expensive uh, SUV, you know, credit tax. And if in your first few days you are taking a ride out with your family and it breaks down, right? Or someone just puts a scratch on their car, right? How, how, how does that feel? I've just spent 30 lakh rupees, right? And this is what this is what the car is. You feel bad about that, right? But if the same thing happens after five years, after seven years, how do you feel it? You feel it. Okay. So it is that emotional uh, question that comes into play that they have taken a decision in better than How do you relay that and make this person like really good? Really, really. okay. And that brings down to a point of something called as persona. Persona management is that you know it's, it's a three D factor: the doer, the driver, and the decision maker. Right? Who is the doer? Who is going to use your product? The person at the, at the bottom of the pyramid, that is the person who is going to use your product. Right? Not a very big influential guy, but does not have the authority to say no, I am not going to He has to you know, do whatever the manager says. That is your doer. Who is your driver? The one who has influenced the decision making in your way. Right? This is the guy that I was giving an example of. That yes, these guys are great, the product is great, the pricing is great. Founders are amazing, the founders accept the important meeting and all of that kind of things. You know, that, that makes all the difference. Right? So understand who is your uh, your your driver. And then comes the decision maker. Who is the one who has signed the check? That person is important. Right? And how do you execute this? Once you have identified it, but your business outcomes, that we just spoke a few minutes back, your business outcomes which are expected are different for all of these things. Right. What is expected out of, a, out of the person who is on the ground is different for the person who is in the middle and it is different for the person who is at the top. Right? Think about a Zomato or a or, 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 or in our example, think about a Bismarck. Who are the typical users of Bismarck? It is the sales teams who are there going to Kirana to Kirana to take your orders. Right? So how is Bismarck going to make their life easy? Right, think about it from a literal point of view. Who are the ones who are using the CRM? The actual people who are using that CRM, right? uh, the SDRs, uh, the, the marketing emails. What is the expectation that they have from a good CRM? 
focus on that business outcome and during your onboarding phase, are you able to get more? Same is with your driver, the person who influenced that decision making in your favor. What is it that he is expecting? A regional level reports. I have five reports under me, I have you know 20 people in this city. We'll take an example of an Uber or Ola or Sweetie or Zomato or even the smaller business. Like what is their job? And how is my city performing? What was it earlier versus what is it now? Is it in line with the overall business expectations? He has to report these numbers to the manager. Are you giving him the right reports, right dashboard, sharing his time, making his life easier, making his life better, and all? That is the business outcome that he is looking for. That's what we have to talk with him. Right? Who is your decision maker at a very, very broad level? Right? And it works out to the insurance point that that level. What is the outcome that he is expecting? Right? If you are talking a lot about just the Uber and the driver with the decision maker, you will not be able to pull it. In most of the meetings, you would just be in this Uber. Or just doing this job because it's just not interesting. Right? So that's how you try and engage with it. And your CS strategy includes all of this. Right? So be very clear right at the start that what is it that is If you are too reactive, then it's difficult. But learn more if you have time as well because, like I mentioned, it's an iterative process. Only difference is that why to iterate for four years when the same iteration can be done in six months. Right? We don't reinvent electricity again and again. It's already done. Right? I just pay someone and get the electricity uh, at my right? So, scalable CS strategy is important, you know, so that when the time comes, take it up. Experienced CS leadership. Right? I'm talking about the stage where we have already crossed the unicorn CS stage. The first CSM stage who does everything in the general But as soon as you have crossed that particular stage, just one level about that, you, you need to start thinking about the experience CSM stage. In the early stage, we have all heard about uh, founder driven sales, founder driven marketing. How many of you have, uh, how many of you have ever heard about founder driven customer success? Probably not, right? The founders themselves who went to sales, they themselves who went, uh, you know, Get their hands dirty on the marketing CRMs and all of that. Hardly anyone does customer success by themselves. Right? And like Dalit mentioned, he's not a pie for you know one sales guy. Right? He learned over a period of time. And he started excelling that. So similarly, customer success, you may not know a lot about it now, but it has to be started from you. Because that's the culture that is going to pull down. That the founder gets his hands dirty. Right? And as soon as you cross that stage, there are two additional aspects to this. One is two frequent changes in your CS leadership and not changing at all. Both of them are there. right. So some of the examples uh, that you know, if you were in the very early stage uh, in the zero to one million kind of a stage, you scale, you have three or four CSMs. Now you are you know, working with your existing customers, uh, and as soon as you start expanding to other regions, now you need probably one. Uh, you know, one senior manager or some, someone like that who is uh, working both at IC plus uh, you know, those two or three CSNs are reporting to him, right? Uh, and over a period of time, as the business scales, you keep on promoting that same person. That senior manager becomes an associate director, a director, a senior director becomes a VP in just about five years or so. And in most cases, this guy has never worked in any other SaaS company. Now the trial and error game starts right now. You come to a point, it's a plateau. Now you are not able to do anything for two years as a founder and that uh, on paper director customer success or a VP customer success is not able to try anything you know. Don't come to that stage. So start thinking about it right now. Why do we not need a director CS today? Why do we not need a VP CS today? Keep your eyes and ears open, just like you do for your sales page. You may not hire a sales page today, but you know that you know, someday you will have to hire a sales page. And you keep exploring in these kind of events, or through networks and all of that. So someday you know that this is a great guy. As soon as I need to hire, I will hire this guy. That same happens with your business processes. You need to start with your eye today because your existing head of customer success may not be the best bet. Right? And I'm giving you live examples here companies who have raised 50 million plus funding, 20 million plus funding. They don't open. Right? And the reality aspect of that, uh, of the, the other side is, some founders realize that yes, this is a mistake, right? And the mistake that they do thereafter is they don't know who, who is the right serious leader because because it was not a founder-driven customer success, 
they are dependent on all the lengthy media. And hence I am saying they don't read that up. It's mostly general media that this is what a customer success rate should do and all of that kind of things. You hire a wrong person and three months, six months down the line, the entire culture goes for a loss. And you change their skill set and you bring another skill set and you change their skill set and you bring another skill set. In two years, two and a half years, poor people who are there at the ground talking with customers, they are a confused lot. They don't know what to do. And the founder is a confused person. Because every news he has had that he has hired, he has come with his own way of working, and he is dependent on that person because the founder doesn't know what to do, what is right and what is wrong. He is dependent on the expertise of someone else. Right? But does that happen typically in sales? No. Right? Most of you guys would be doing sales, are involved in marketing, all of you guys are involved in that, right? And hence the chances of you hiring a wrong sales head are way excellent as compared to the chances of you hiring a wrong customer success head. Right? So founder driven customer success and knowing when to get the right person, what rates they should be having, that is it. The last important point is a strong data knowledge. Right? Now today you may have maybe 5 customers, 10 customers, 20 customers. Most of the things can be directly downloaded from database and you know put it in the pivots and all of that is great. Is that scalable? Well? Because today you're not investing in the right tools, you're not investing in the right processes. Because you're saying that I only have 20 customers, 25 customers, how does that matter? It's not really that way. But think about it that as soon as your sales and marketing uh, engine starts pumping, that 20 will in no time become 50 and in no time become 100. Now your priority is to serve those 20, 50 and 100. You don't have time to set up your customer success tools, data related practices, rituals and all of that. And now you are getting dependent on the point 2, which is as a DMA process, just hire someone as early as possible to work CHA. And then the entire cycle is it. <coughs> so this strong data foundation is important. Again, it is a founder driven customer success. You would know that in my first five, first ten customers, customer meetings, what were the most important points that I had to tell you? How? What did I do well? What did I not do well? And hence, you would be able to not only create a culture of customer success for your CSMs, your individual contributors, the core operators, but get the right heads and with, use their experience, but in your culture. Right? So, so now this is more from a CS majority. This is not a stage that your company is being together. This is more from where do you stand from customer success maturity point. Right? Some of these are self-explanatory and not half of them are some lot of interest. So foundation phase, where you have just started thinking about why customer success, right? You just discussed in detail about the CS strategy. Are we also started thinking of, have you also started thinking about customer segmentation? And we all know what is customer segmentation. Is have you started thinking about what is the success matrix for the customer, not us? Right? So, in this story, we always have to remember that the hero is not us in the product. The hero is always an obvious customer. We are just the guy. Right? Mr. Bond is customer. We are just the Mr. Q, giving all the possible things, all the possible tools that are required for him to become successful. Right? Who are you suggesting? Mindset. I'm very specifically saying mindset. It may not happen on day one. The stage that you guys are in, everything may not be required. It's like a great new stage. But if you have that mindset that as soon as the support related issues, the work related issues, they come down, I will start, you know, let's say with 10%, 20% that rituals uh, kind of a process. Right? And the value ownership. Give them the ownership. Completely give them the ownership. That yes, I will take care of rituals, I will take care of expansions, which by the way is your NRR. Right? Your growth phase, which is your scalable onboarding template, right? Now you know that what is a good onboarding and what is a bad onboarding, what is your time to first value and all of that. Create an onboarding template, an engagement framework, which is the ritual part, right? A scalable support. So this is an evolution, right? And the further evolution of that is the scale phase, right? So again, this is not at which stage of the business you are in. This is at what stage of your customer success mindset you are in, right? So it can be a mix of some of these aspects. The intention of showing this is just more like a mirror. That what of these are checkboxes, and this will help you realize that where do you stand and what else is supposed to be done. 
right? At this stage, probably we need not a state phase, but much more important is the foundation of the growth phase.